everyone, my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel. And today I have another video for you all. Today I would like to discuss how you can make a relationship work between an experienced submissive and a new dom. This is actually inspired by a question that Brittany Simon received during one of her monthly Q&A TMI videos. And if you haven't seen that already, I recommend you do. Link will be down in the description box below. I realized while I was watching that video, this is also something that I have received a lot of questions about, but I've not yet been able to put all of my thoughts to paper and actually outline a video. Well, I did so this afternoon, and five pages later, I think I have most of my thoughts together. So that's what we're going to be going over today, just some tips and tricks for how to navigate this lifestyle, pitfalls to be aware of, lots of advice for new doms regardless of their experience level of their partners and just good relationship stuff about BDSM altogether. So let's go ahead and get into it. So as usual, just a few things to note before we get into the topic. I also want to say that one, I am going to be assuming that you are familiar with some basic BDSM terminology like consent, limits, safe words, those sorts of things. If you're not familiar what those terms mean, if you're not familiar with what a dom or a sub is, I have links to additional videos down below that go over those in more detail. Also remember, if you are confused about anything, you can also Google. There are lots of easily available web pages like BDSM Wiki that go over commonly used terms if something I say is not familiar to you. Two, I am going to be using the terms dom and sub in this video. However, this is equally applicable if you are looking at a new top with an experienced bottom, master with slave, daddy with little, any combination of those relationship types and styles. There are 101 different terms you can use to describe a BDSM relationship. And I think for the most part, if you are somebody who is generally more on the dominant side, regardless of your title, there's probably going to be something in this video for you. And finally, I am also going to be operating under the assumption that you want to engage in this type of relationship of your own free will. We spend a lot of time in this community discussing situations where experienced dominants take advantage of new submissives and coerce them into doing things that they don't want to do. But I think there are also many situations where would-be submissives coerce or force or convince their partners who are otherwise vanilla to be their dominant or play that role even though they don't really want to. And I personally believe, especially if you are seeking something that is an everyday 24-7 type BDSM relationship, you can't really do so if there's no internal drive. Self-sacrifice is a nice idea in a relationship, but when it comes to BDSM, it is my personal opinion that there really needs to be more there beyond just, I want to make my partner happy. That's the only reason why you're engaging in this. If you fear losing the relationship, if you don't, if you fear your partner will leave you or not be satisfied or be angry with you because you don't want to do this, that is not going to create a healthy, long-term, sustainable dynamic. And I really encourage you, if you are in doubt about this, to really, really think deeply about what appeals to you about BDSM, why you are doing this, and just really get in touch with yourself about what is motivating you to want to engage in this lifestyle. Which actually brings me to my first point that I want to discuss, which is examining the compatibility of the partnership. I think it's really important because when it comes to especially existing romantic or sexual partnerships, there is this assumption that if you decide you want to play dom and sub roles, that those should also naturally click together, but that's not always the case. Just because one person wants to be dominant and the other person wants to be submissive, you may have very different ideas about what that means and you may have very different things that appeal to you. So I really think that the first step to making this type of relationship work is to examine what your own interests are independently. If you're not really familiar enough with terminology or common BDSM activities, there are things like yes, no, maybe checklists or the bdsmtest.org that you can use as tools to kind of get familiar with what out there might be appealing to you. And it's really important to talk about this up front because you can have two completely different ideas about what you want from a relationship. And if the experienced submissive wants a 24-7 MS dynamic where they are not allowed to use their first name 
and you want a casual bedroom only after sex a couple times a month type dynamic, then it's probably not going to really work out and you need to have a conversation to see if there's somewhere you can meet in the middle, have some kind of discussion about expectations, so on and so forth. And I think as well, when you are doing this, some good questions to ask would be what types of titles appeal to you, what types of roles appeal to you, what types of play do you like to engage in or would you want to engage in, what types of play totally just squeak you out, do you like role playing, how much do you want this to be part of your everyday life, will this also be sexual, will it be romantic, Will this be in the context of a monogamous relationship or in an open relationship, so on and so forth. And once you have done all of that and you've come together and you've had a conversation, you decide, okay, great, it sounds like we have kind of the same general level of interest or we have enough areas where we're compatible, great, you can move on and further the conversation. And again, I really don't want anybody to be coerced into doing things that they are not comfortable with. If your partner wants a 24-7 MS dynamic and the most that you would be comfortable taking control of is a couple times a week, you need to be honest about that. That is really, really, really important in BDSM, especially if you're going to be playing the dominant role. You need to be able to be honest. And I don't want to make it sound like you're not going to be able to change your girl because that definitely does happen but I would err on the side of caution and not assume that you will warm up to the idea of something when that might not be the case and end up making promises that you're not gonna be able to keep to your partner. Which brings me to my next segment, which is setting realistic expectations, especially for yourself as a new dominant. If you are completely new to this lifestyle, if you don't really know anything about it, if this is your first time dipping your toe in the water, there are probably a lot of built up misconceptions you have about what it means to be dominant and what you need to do in order to be dominant. And I have plenty of other videos you can watch in terms of advice for dominance, how to find your own personal style, so on and so forth, but I just wanna go over a few of the common thoughts that people have. The number one thing is to keep in mind that no dom is born knowing everything. Even for people who are born dominant, who are just naturally inclined to this and start engaging in this type of behavior as soon as they're able to do so, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're also born knowing how to swing a flogger or effectively bark orders or anything like that. We all have to start somewhere. I have in the past used the term fake it till you make it when it comes to BDSM. And I think to some degree you can do that when it comes to developing confidence or developing a certain personal style, but you can't really fake having a skill set. And especially if you are dealing with an experienced submissive, if you lie to them about having experience with spanking or flogging, or you know what a whip is, or you know what a cane is, and you don't, that is quickly going to become very, very obvious. And BDSM, fundamentally at its core, is a experience of deep trust. And if you break that at the beginning by lying about what your experience level is, that is not going to set a good precedent. So really just start from the beginning with being honest about your skill level, being honest about the things that you have done before, things that you've tried in the past, and start from there. Another thing to keep in mind is being a dominant does not mean being domineering. I have a whole video going into this subject, but suffice to say, just because you are dominant doesn't mean you suddenly have to start barking orders or pretending you know what's best or put on a big airs and pretend like you know everything because again, that's not true. To me, being a good dominant is about being a good leader and using the resources available to you. Your submissive is potentially one of those resources. So don't feel ashamed to ask your partner questions and to use their knowledge. Accept the things that you have around you and learn and grow from that. You don't have to just pretend like you know everything. You don't have to pretend like you have it all figured out when you don't, because especially if you're in an existing relationship, your submissive already knows that you don't have it figured out anyways, because that's why you've had all of these conversations up to this point. Also, in general, just remember to be kind to yourself. It is okay to make mistakes. It's okay to have to stumble and figure things out slowly over time. Don't expect yourself to be perfect. I think especially with dominance, we put a lot of pressure on them to get everything right the first time. And chances are you're not going to, and that's okay. And don't put pressure on yourself to be perfect when you don't have to be. Everybody 
no matter how experienced they are, is going to mess something up at some point. And it's better that you be prepared and accepting of potential failure than pretend like you can't fail at all. Also keep in mind that you probably won't be able to reach all of your kinky goals overnight. Developing something like a 24-7 MS relationship takes years, even with mutually experienced BDSM couples. This is not something that you can build in a day. Acknowledge that things will take time, be patient with yourself and your partner, and always acknowledge that you are building something together and you don't have to do it alone. And finally, remember to leave room for growth and change. I already touched on this earlier, and while I don't necessarily think it's a good idea to bank into growing into being okay with one specific thing, it's a good idea to not do the opposite and lock yourself into one permanent idea of what you believe your ultimate dominant form is. Especially in the first few months of being kinky, going to events, reading books, and just through trial and experimentation, you will find things that you enjoy that you weren't expecting to, you will find you don't enjoy things that you were expecting to, you will come up with new ideas, you may discover you have a proclivity for switching. There are just so many ways that you can change just by experiencing this lifestyle for the first time. And I think it really does behoove everybody involved to remember that one of the best processes about BDSM is it opens you up to a lot of new experiences. And I would much rather that people enter into this with an open mind rather than a closed one and expecting something very specific to happen. Don't feel like you need to tamp down on anything or pretend like you're not into something or pretend like you are into something. Really just be honest with yourself. And I really think that, especially with an experienced submissive, they will know and understand what that process is like because they have probably gone through it themselves. I know I have. And that brings me to my next point, which is education. Education for me is the thing that separates the wheat from the chaff when it comes to BDSM dominance. If you are actively engaged in wanting to learn, that is a fantastic sign. But for some reason, there seems to be this very stubborn pride in a lot of new dominants where they don't want to read books, they don't want to watch tutorials, they don't want to listen to anybody else talk about BDSM, they don't want to be a part of the community, they don't want to listen to podcasts, they want to just do it their own way, they want to figure it out for themselves because that's just how they are. Or they take some kind of pride in being the alpha lone wolf who does it their own way and just knows how to do things. And again, you're really not fooling anybody if you're going to pretend like you know stuff that you actually don't know how to do. And for me, especially, this is really all about safety. Your safety, your bottom, your submissive safety, and if you are going to be willfully ignorant and put your partner into unnecessary dangerous situations, that just is really not a good sign for a potential dominant. And as well, it's about not wasting your time. And I think if you can't think about it in any other way, consider this. The reason why we have these educational resources is because the people who have come before us have had to troubleshoot everything that comes with BDSM. There is not an inherent manual that people are born with that says this is how to do a BDSM relationship. There have been literal blood, sweat, and tears trying to figure this stuff out, and wouldn't it be a heck of a lot better to not spend three hours frustratingly trying to figure out how to do something when the answer to your exact problem is a quick Google search away and maybe 20 minutes of an article. And when it comes to learning techniques and suggestions and ideas for scenes, there are so many resources and I really can't understand why you would purposely not want to engage in those resources. Again, there's just such a wealth of information out there and it's just something that I, I really would encourage you as a dominant to look for because there's just so much of it and it is really key to developing yourself, getting new ideas, getting perspective, and especially when you're looking at multiple sources, being able to form your own ideas about things. Also, education can be more than just self-improvement. This doesn't need to be something that you do by yourself. I personally really think that kink education can be a bonding activity. Reading a BDSM nonfiction book together by a fireplace, watching an educational erotic film, attending classes together, all of this with the right mindset, rather than feeling like going to school, can actually feel like a date night activity. It will build trust with your partner, it'll give you an opportunity to learn and demonstrate skills depending on what classes you're taking, it'll give you new ideas for scenes, it'll help just with that general spark in the relationship if that's something that you're really after. And again, I really just think 
what really separates a good dominant from a bad dominant is somebody who is willing to learn from others versus somebody who is closed off to information. And especially with experienced submissives, I don't know of anybody who would knowingly engage in BDSM with somebody who was purposely ignorant. Okay, at this point, you're probably saying, all right, Evie, that sounds great, but how do I find all of these classes and discussion groups and things that you're talking about? Well, your number one resource locally is going to be going to FetLife. That is going to be where you'll find discussion groups, support groups, munches, classes, other events, dungeon nights, any opportunity you can find to engage locally in BDSM, it's probably going to be on FetLife. If you're looking for book resources, I will put some links down in the description box below. And if you're looking for things like conventions, which offer opportunities for intensive weekend long trainings, especially tailored oftentimes to people who are newer or just starting to experiment with BDSM, the Black Pomegranate has an amazing extensive list of conventions all over the world that happen every year. And the final part of education is obviously not just being willing to learn things, but also being willing to practice them. This is something that gets very specific to the type of play that you're doing or the thing that you're practicing, so I can't necessarily give detailed advice in this section, but it is important to acknowledge when you are developing those hard skills like learning how to use a cane or a flogger, how to correctly put in a gag, those all take practice and that might mean that you are taking notes during class and you watch a demonstration but then you have to go home and actually develop the muscle memory and start practicing how it feels to you that might mean having to put a cushion on the back of the kitchen chair and trying that with a flogger that might mean trying something on your bedroom mattress trying things on inanimate objects trying new toys on yourself getting a sense of what everything feels like the intensity of certain things all of that is really important because listening to somebody lecture about something is great, but you don't really know how it actually is until you try it out for yourself. And again, kind of being involved in your local community, going and watching people can be helpful, and especially there might even be practice groups dedicated to certain kinks like bondage, whips, electroplay, other things that might interest you where you can get direct one-on-one -on -one feedback. And that leads me to my last point, for this section, which is getting involved in the community. I think this is another great way to kind of up your game as a dominant and kind of come up to speed near your submissive level. And I know not everybody has a local community near them, but if one is accessible, that is how you're going to be able to find things that I've already mentioned, like munches and support groups. That's how you're potentially going to be able to watch other people play, get ideas from them, Find people who are experienced with certain types of play who might be able to help you answer your questions. And just in general, being able to connect with other people who are on a similar life path as you, people who have similar interests. And especially even though your partner might already be experienced as a submissive, there are just certain types of feedback and certain just little insights about dominance that as a submissive a partner is not going to have that maybe other people who are even third parties might be able to give you on a dominant to dominant level. Alright, so to summarize so far, what we have discussed doing is to establish compatibility and talk about what your interests are. I also really, really advise that you set realistic expectations and be kind to yourself and understand that you're not going to be perfect and that dominants don't know everything. I also really strongly advocate for education and practice and also getting involved in your local community. All of these things will help build your confidence level as a dominant, help you get prepared for scenes, help you kind of understand yourself better, help you understand your partner's interests more, and hopefully also help develop some bonding in your relationship. So I think we don't really have enough time to get into this today, so I will be making a separate video where I discuss the last section in detail, which is how you actually conduct a scene as somebody who is a new dominant with an experienced submissive. If you do want to check that video out and you haven't already, please do subscribe. I make videos twice a week. You can subscribe down there hitting that little button. And if you haven't already, 
I would also recommend you check out my Patreon because that is where I am able to offer lots of one-on-one -on -one help and advice, more exclusive videos, tutorials, photo shoots, all of those sorts of things. Plus we have an amazing Discord chat that is a fantastic support group for submissives and dominants alike. So if you haven't looked at that already, please do. Link will be down in the description box below for that. Any comments or questions, anything else you can leave down in the comment section below. And until I see you guys next time, hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week.